I am trapped under the tarp of the tent. My bicycle has been knocked over by the wind. I thought I would manage to pitch up the tent, but I couldn't. This is crazy. I managed to put the bike back up. Everything, absolutely everything is soaking wet right now. The paraglider is wet, my tent is completely drenched. I won't have a slip. So I am now under this roof here. And this is the surrounding. I am cooking in the middle of the night. I am cooking rice. I just cut the onions. And I have this at 10.30 in the freaking night. It's 2.30 a.m. and I'm still in the same spot. And uh, that's my situation right now. The bike is here. Stuff is drying on top of the bike. Paraglider, everything is soaking wet except what is in these blue bags. My sleeping bag is completely wet. As I was laying now here on the floor, a car pulled over to my surprise. The guy had to deliver something to this warehouse that is behind me. And the dude was from originally from Uganda, 25 years old. We had a very nice conversation, I think more than half an hour long. He really offered me this blanket to stay warm tonight. I think I'm going to take this blanket with me. I still have now to wait for the next three hours till the sun comes out and dry out my things. What an experience. It's now 5.30 in the morning. Cloudy outside, foggy, no sign of sunshine whatsoever. Tonight I will definitely need some uh, warm place to sleep in. This was a horrible night. A horrible night. It's time to move on now. All right, change of plans. I'm not just riding a couple of kilometers to the next small village, but I am going to ride like 21 kilometers now, a bit over an hour. The sun is not shining in a way it's good because I can cover ground without sweating too much. I can take my time. I am really chilled right now. And yeah, that's why I think it's better if I just keep on moving. Track. I dried up my tent, dried up the sleeping bag, a bunch of other items too. I spent here over four hours. This young fella came to me and of course, you know, he asked me how uh, everything is, what I'm doing. Like many other people already asked me in these uh, four days since I am in Switzerland. And this guy, long story short, he just said, okay, bye, kind of wanted actually to leave. And then he came with five coins each five francs and I'm like whoa what a nice guy that really surpassed my expectations you know to get money wow now I'm going to move on go to the supermarket and buy some food <laughs> okay my stop went pretty good I bought uh, whatever I need for the next couple of days and now I am on my way to Bern one of the popular cities or major cities in uh, Switzerland I just started riding and it started raining like once again. I am really, really tired. I didn't sleep at all last night, so I think I'm going to sleep like a baby tonight. Oh my God, I see at the horizon, the Alps. I mean, I still have like 50 kilometers to reach the base of the mountains, but that's gonna happen tomorrow. <laughs> I can't believe. Maybe to see it a bit better. Right there where the sky is the bluest and the brightest. I can see the snow on the mountains. I just took a hit. Or better said, I just fell with the bicycle right now on the street. Right here. I had my front tire right in the gap from the tram tracks. Because there were some guys, there are the lights. 
who were cheering me up they were like hey really loud you know they saw me fully packed like this they asked me where do you actually go where do you travel and I just turned my head around and I said uh, South Spain and I didn't see anymore the gap that's what happened now to the bags well just tiny tiny scratches here you can barely see anything uh, here here you can see it's not that bad but still I mean it's new equipment I mean well that's how it is now and here the paint went off the aluminum nothing bad happened like little things okay let's keep pushing to the center of uh, Bern that's my ultimate destination today so I just arrived in Bern now that's the middle of the city the city center hustle and the bustle everywhere just going to look for a nice place maybe launch the drone which I don't know if I will be able to do if not well that's how it is trying to go now somewhere up there on the hills I already have here a spot where I could pitch up my tent in case everything else fails but uh, actually I want to reach much further up because I can still hear the sounds of the train I don't think I can make it up there though. The bike falls on one side. Maybe if I take the paraglider off. I just came a bit further now. Started from down there, up here. It took already like 20 minutes. The paraglider is on my back because otherwise it's not possible. Another piece further, I have to go up there. Oh, f ah! One, two, three. God, it's so heavy. Just look the way these cows look at me. It's like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? I could as well camp here. Yeah. I would, in a way, like to stay here. On the other hand, I am very exposed. In case I don't find anything else up there, I come here. It took more than an hour to cover, I think, 1.5 kilometers. Now you can imagine what a climb this was. And right there at the horizon are the mountains where I'm going to go tomorrow. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm almost there. I still need some time. I see others are camping too. I wouldn't be the only one. I'm just going to look a bit around here. Oh my God, I finally made it. I'm here at the highest point in uh, the entire city of Bern. And I'm going out to head back to the place where I saw these two tents and sleep there. I needed for like 3.5 kilometers, almost two hours to push my bike uphill. It was the most brutal thing that I have ever done with the bicycle. So there is somebody else also in the tent, which is really good. And now look. This is Ben from above. Yeah, so unfortunately I cannot uh, take off, as you can see here. Um, yeah, so I can't do anything. Good morning, guys. So last night after the SD card got full and I turned off the GoPro and I was ready to go in the tent These two security guys up there started with a flashlight coming everywhere and checking the place and they saw that I have my tent open and they asked me like uh, what am I doing, why am I camping here if I want to sleep 
And I was, yeah, I think so. Because next to me were other two tents. But the security guy told me that these two tents belong to workers. Because up there on the hill is a restaurant. And it was a huge party last night. Then they told me that I cannot sleep there. I even tried to give them money to let me sleep there. I had at 11 o'clock in the night to pack up my things because they didn't accept my offer, of course. Everything was wet because in the night starts getting this foggy in the air. I had to pack up all my gear, everything what I had, and find in the night a place to sleep. I had to go all this way down on the, on the road. And here's where I could actually come through the forest and sleep right here at the edge of the forest. Anyway, I am now here charging my power banks because they are the most important. Today I'm gonna push for another 50k to reach uh, the mecca of paragliding in Switzerland, one of them. Now I'm going to prepare my breakfast and head out. I have some sausage here, some milk, tuna, champion breakfast. It's food that can spoil pretty fast and I have to watch out with it but looks pretty good for now let's dig in three and a half hours later i now managed to eat brush my teeth do all the morning jazz that maybe takes home half an hour or one hour i also gave myself more time and i did the things pretty slowly everything out here takes a while you learn to take one thing at a time because it's a slow process you have to take things slowly you know to, to slow down a lot and to learn to be patient be organized and there's a lot of self-discipline that goes into it so it's a growth process anyway now i'm packing up the things and i'm ready to hit the road so what i take now five minutes for i took yesterday like two hours i was in a good mood and energized to tackle whatever comes in front of me I wouldn't let the last two nights determine my adventure and the course of it. I knew these bad experiences were there just to make me stronger. Not gonna lie, I felt like giving up a couple of times last night. But those were mere thoughts. Thoughts that vanished like smoke once the sun rays touched my skin in the morning. Guys, look at this. I met these two nice people on the way to Tun uh, Tunisia. They brought me to this uh, place. Well, along the way there is this river. So these guys are ready to jump now from the bridge. Vice bring to you? Not him. Whoa! <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's ah! unbelievable. Awesome. I crossed again yet a bridge where I have to walk over it. And they are my new friends in front of me. While riding through a small forest, not far away from that beautiful river, an elderly couple was riding behind me and they were curious to know where I'm heading to. We had a very nice conversation and to my surprise, they were riding in the same direction as me, Interlaken my first important checkpoint on my trip to Spain. They invited me to stay overnight in their home. Yes, guys, this is the next morning after meeting Vili and Elizabeth. They took me in. I got a place to stay over the night. I am here now, just me and my bike. No trailer, no luggage, because they are going to take everything with them in their car and we are going to meet up 35 kilometers away from their home in the same direction where I actually want to head to. The landing sites of the paragliding places where I'm supposed to take off. I'm going to pass Tuner Sea on my way to Interlaken and show you how that region looks like. Enjoy! Ich kann nicht mehr. 
Ja, ja, <lacht> geht gar nicht. That was a nice race. Was ist los? Gut ab. Gut ab. Ich habe mir eigentlich verpasst. Ich habe es mir verpasst. Ja, jetzt bin ich angekommen. Genau, ihr seid jetzt auch gleich angekommen. Ja. Und ich habe zu Elisabeth gesagt, dort mit dem roten Dress. Also ihr habt jetzt die letzten 200-300 Meter mich gesehen, oder? Ah, hier. Hier. Du abgewogen bist. Und dann sagen wir jeweils, Zwei Minuten vor der Zeit ist Pünktlichkeit. <lacht> hey guys, I just arrived here and they are my friends that I made along the way. It's freaking crazy, so I just needed like one hour and maybe 10 minutes to drive the 35 kilometers still here. And we arrived exactly on time, all three of us. Anyway, see you later. Wow, this is the adventure of my lifetime. I start catching the rhythm of my new life. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to keep on watching my cycling trip through Europe, don't forget to subscribe with the notifications bell on and don't forget to hit the like button as well. See you in the next episode.